Parzan is a rather interesting character as she is someone who was alive a hundred years ago. She's a scholar from the academia that was trapped within an impossible puzzle room which took her about a hundred years to solve. Now you would think that during this hundred year confinement, the story of how she got her vision would be something related to how she solved it or how she escaped, right? Well in truth, she received her vision only after leaving this location and it had nothing to do with her solving it. The circumstances around this makes the way Farazan obtained her vision largely different from others and frankly speaking, it's kinda odd. Before we get into that, if you wanna see more Genshin Impact content, do consider subscribing to the channel. Let's first talk about who Farazan really is. A long time ago, Farazan was once a great and noteworthy scholar in Sumeru's academia. At the time, she was at the forefront of ancient mechanics, but this isn't her primary field of study. In fact, she's actually a student of language from the Haravata Darshans. You see, 100 years ago, the academia's understanding of ancient mechanisms like the ruin devices were relatively new. They didn't really understand how they worked and could only make educated guesses. A lot of the time, however, these ancient machines tend to be found near ruins that had ancient texts or even writings on the wall that described them. Understanding and deciphering these texts is Farzan's area of expertise and through it allowed her to infer how such machines work. But this was a hundred years ago and since then, the field of ancient mechanics has advanced considerably and the reliance on inferring function from text is no longer a relevant skill. Now earlier I mentioned that Farzan was trapped in a room for about a hundred years. But how did this actually happen? You see, back in the past, there were still many discoveries to be made about the kingdom of King Deshret. Many ruins lay hidden and Farzan was at the forefront of enabling these discoveries. Because she knew how to interpret the ancient text and language, as well as infer how the technology of Deshret's empire worked, she was largely responsible for opening and allowing access to these ruins for other researchers. Farzan would go from ruin to ruin, solve their puzzle or basically unlock the front door and allow other researchers to access the treasure trove of knowledge within. This continued until she found the one ruin puzzle she couldn't solve. King Dash's empire was a technologically advanced society, so while the word ruin is used a lot here, what you need to remember is that these ruins were actually outfitted with pretty modern technology. During an expedition, she had stumbled upon a particularly interesting room which was filled with never-before-seen mechanisms and writings. Suffice to say, the room triggered some safety protocol when she entered it and this is how she got trapped. Why this particular room had such safety measures is unclear. Perhaps it was a secret trove of knowledge but we don't know for sure. What we do know is that Farzan was trapped and figuring out the mechanism built into the room was the only way to free herself. The mechanism built into the room also seemed to have the ability to hold its contents in stasis and this included Farzan. It essentially preserved her life functions and while in this room, she felt no hunger, tiredness and even aging had stopped. This is how she was able to survive for such a long time. Now I won't go too deeply into how she escaped exactly but as you might have guessed, Farzan eventually left this room. And this is the moment that she received her vision. Most others who receive a vision are often those with high ambitions, immense desire or willpower. More often than not, the moment of their peak ambition or desire tends to coincide with the moment they receive their vision. Farzan, however, did not meet either of these requirements. At least, that's how it appears. After taking the better part of a century to solve this puzzle, she finally left the ruins into a largely unknown locale as 100 years is more than enough to change every landscape in the horizon. In her half-conscious state, she had no idea where to go but for one reason or another, she decided to instinctually follow where the direction of the wind was blowing as it seemed to be guiding her. Surprisingly, the path the wind had laid before her conveniently avoided all manner of dangers, whether it's animals or environmental hazards. She stumbled along until fatigue and hunger finally hit her. Now in her vision law, it's not clearly stated how long she walked after she left the ruins. She might have been walking for days or this could have just been hours, but in either case, she eventually realized her body felt weaker and that she was hungry. She would eventually collapse and fall into a deep sleep, likely due to this exhaustion. It's important to note that at this very moment, the wind guiding her had died down as well. This is where things get a little bit weird. 
The idea that a vision can save you isn't unheard of. Bennett's story revolves around something similar. But in Bennett's case, it was clearly mentioned that the vision acted not out of pity or mercy to save him. In Farzan's story, right after the guiding winds had dissipated, a sudden wind appeared somewhere nearby, close to a travelling merchant caravan. This wind proceeded to blow into the eye of a sumter beast, making it move away from the caravan, and as one of the merchants went to rein the animal back in, they saw something glittering in the distance. Thinking it was treasure, they went towards the location and found Farzan laying on the ground with an Animo vision right next to her. The reason this is weird is because the way the story is told, the wind seemed to act fully out of its own accord, as though it was alive or controlled by someone. It guided Farzan away from danger and when Farzan was knocked out, even tried to catch the attention of a passerby who could save her. So if the original requirement for a vision was to have some ambition or desire you wish fulfilled, what could Farzan have desired? Was it as simple as wanting to survive? To be perfectly honest with you, I haven't the faintest idea. Farzan isn't the only person who has obtained a vision in a peculiar way, but in other examples, there is usually a reason we can infer through the actions leading up to them receiving their vision. But Farzan could barely have thought about this, as the minute she walked out of the ruins, she was barely conscious, and after walking for a while, eventually collapsed. The first thing that comes to mind is that perhaps her insane will to live is what crystallized into a vision. I mean, someone who could stay sane for a hundred years of puzzle solving must be someone of immense mental fortitude. Perhaps this insane willpower is what convinced the gods that she was worthy of a vision. After all, if you were going to put someone on the road to godhood, I assume you would want that person to have the capability and willpower to actually finish the job, right? Another thought that came to mind was, perhaps by the very nature of visions, being an individualized crystallized ambition, a level of sentience exists in each of them. In this case, despite her body failing, her desire to continue to live materialized as a vision that somehow managed to ask for help. But the guiding wind appeared right as she left the ruin, and her vision appeared later on, so it seems a bit unlikely. So here comes the craziest theory of all. What if someone was trying their hardest to really keep her alive, and failing that materialized a vision? The wind that was blowing seemed to do so with very clear intentions of saving her. As we know, none of the Archons can influence the issuance of a vision, so this must be someone either from Celestia or higher. The only other candidate we know of that is even associated with the wind is the god of time, Istaroth. We have recently seen the appearance of a rather unknown character in 3.3, which I suspect to be Isteroth herself. I covered this in another video if you're curious about that, but maybe for one reason or another, Isteroth has a reason to keep Faruzan alive. With the appearance of the fourth descender and with how much of the world's fate is changing, I somehow suspect that these old sleeping titans are reawakening, and the typical rules for how Teva used to work will now start to change. But just to rein back my crazy conspiracy theory here, truth be told, we just really don't know. Again, this is just a theory. Farzan could very likely have gotten a vision because she literally just gained her freedom. Or perhaps her showcase of an insane will to survive might have made her a likely candidate to actually ascend. Whatever the case may be, we seem to be meeting more and more peculiar cases when it comes to receival of visions, and this might be an indication that we are moving towards the climax of this entire conflict. But until then, we'll just have to wait before we can get answers. That does it for this video though. If you enjoyed it, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. As usual, have a good day.